We know that everything has been going our way so far for this service, and it continues to go our way as we prepare to listen to our speaker this morning, our pastor, Reverend John Scott, and because May's Child Month, his talk will be related to Child Month. Let us welcome our pastor, our spiritual leader, for his good, good words this morning, his encouragement. Reverend John, over to you, sir. Good morning, Worldwide Spiritual Family. It is a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to this morning's celebration at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, as I always say, in beautiful, beautiful Jamaica. I love Robert Michael said this morning, it's a sun-drenched Sunday morning, and that's so true. So wherever you are on the face of the planet, just think light, think sun, think, think joy, think beauty, think Jamaica. We're here for you. In Reverend Michael's inspirational reading, which was taken from Dr. Arthur Chang's book, The New Positive Spirituality, which we are using on our, at our Thursday morning class, um, Dr. Chang writes, and I quote, your life is not just happening, it is an opportunity. Your life is not just happening, it is an opportunity. And then someone sent me last night a WhatsApp of a young man whose mother tongue is obviously not English. And he was reading an inspirational thought posted on the wall. Quote, replace the word problema with the word opportunity in all your thoughts. Ah, replace the word problema with the word opportunity in all your thoughts. Hmm. And so our young, earnest young man considers this for a moment, and then reaching for a bottle of wine, he says, okay, I have a very severe drinking of each opportunity. Of course, my friends, Dr. Chang is talking about the opportunities that life presents us to actualize our potential, thereby making all the phases of our life fruitful and fulfilled. He writes, and I quote, nothing is more empowering than a commitment, a covenant to bring your dreams into being. The happiness, love, and abundance you desire can be yours if you will choose them as your destination and stay on your charted path. <laughs> You know, when I first discovered this teaching known as the science of mind, it was, it was really an exhilarating discovery because I found that I really could change my mind and decide what it is I really wanted to experience. What is it that would make my life, all the years of my life, fruitful and fulfilling and, and wonderful? The problem is easy. We change our minds 100,000 times every day. What shall I wear this morning? What shall I have for breakfast or lunch or dinner? Uh, what do I want to accomplish? So changing your mind is easy and great fun sometimes. The problem is how to keep it changed. So we change our mind. You know, we say, okay, I must get on to an exercise routine. I'm going to start every morning, half an hour walking, for warm up and then I'll, I'll do some stretches and whatever. And we do wonderfully for the first two or three or four or even five days. And then it's raining one morning and we decide, no, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not going to go out in this drizzle. And before you know what, six months have passed and you haven't done one stroke. So you changed your mind from being a couch potato to being an, a, a, an exercise um, devotee and it lasted all of five days and then you went, found yourself back on the old treadmill, didn't you? So the problem was when I came to this church, 
It was 40 years ago, I was 38 years old, and I thought, well, I have at least 40 or maybe 50 fruitful years ahead of me, and I can decide what it is I want. But the challenge now was, how do I stay, as Dr. Chang suggests, on the charted path? And what are the fruitful years anyhow? You know, we talk about fruitful years. If we, if we listen to the race thought, what the world says about, about getting older and about fruitful years, if we accept particularly what Western society has, has accepted as the norm, we would believe that, uh, or suppose that the years between perhaps reaching maturity and middle age may be the productive years, maybe our 40s. And then according to the race belief, there is a gradual decline in our ability to produce, to think creatively and constructively. And it would have us believe that there is a gradual downward slip and slide into our 60s and 70s when we really aren't worth very much and shouldn't be up to very much. In fact, we should go home and live on pensions that hardly meet our daily requirements. Such nonsense, my friends, has cheated the world of untold riches. The productive or fruitful years of an, of an individual are unlimited. For some, there, there are no fruitful years at all. And for others, their lives are fruitful up to the very, very end. For the fruitful years are not as commonly believed a certain span stretching from one birthday to another. They are what I call the giving years, the years when we give of ourselves, the years in which an individual offers the best of which he or she has to their families, their friends, their societies, and to the world at large. And you know, when you discover that hidden strength within you, you recognize that it is not related to chronology. It is not a matter of time. It is a matter of consciousness and the, the value that you put on what you bring to life. And bringing to life for me has two meanings. What I bring to life, meaning what do I resuscitate? What do I bring back to life? And what do I bring, meaning what do I offer to the life that I have chosen on the path that I have chosen? So. It makes me sad a little because when I think about a baby, you know, they're wonderful and then they move into childhood and their, their concern is only about themselves, obviously. They, they care very little bit about the world around them. All, everything is geared for their comfort. They're egocentric and that is as it should be. And then they move into teenagerhood and um, we find again, he or she, the, young, the youngster, is all about themselves and mother, moves from just being a, a, a source of comfort and succor to maybe being a source of good cooking, good meals, and a place to, for you, providing a home in which you and your friends can crash. And yes, exactly. So that, that those teenage years pass and they move into, into adulthood. But the society, again, socializes them to, to be in this me, myself, and I um, kind of, of mental set. It's about my career and my advancement and where am I going and what do I want to achieve. So these persons are so focused on themselves that they perhaps fail for many years to recognize that there is something more and that that something more is contributing to their society and to their world and to giving back. When you hear these stories of people who say, I wanted to give back, I wanted to, to enrich, I wanted to share with the community from which I came, with the kids who didn't have the opportunities that I, I, I had, it makes you really feel wonderful because they're, those are people who have decided that their years will be fruitful when they give of themselves, of their time, of the, their talent, and the treasure of their consciousness to humanity. So once we have learned that God lives within us, and that in reality we are not flesh and blood, but we are spirit, 
manifesting through an instrument of flesh, we find within ourselves the capabilities of which we are, we, ha we perhaps never even dreamed we had. You know, once you, you, st you, you embark on a path, you find that life presents you with the opportunities to fulfill your wishes and your desire to be useful and fulfilled. And success takes on a different meaning for you. It is not just about accumulating wealth and having um, a position that people look up to. It is about giving, giving to others and sharing with others the beauty of your beingness. So my friends, I ask you this morning, do you feel that your, your good has been swallowed up by the years? Are you feeling that perhaps your useful years have flown by and you know not when or where? Do you feel that you are no longer useful in the world? That there is nothing left for you to do but to fold your hands and sit? Do you remember Grandma Moses, the American folk artist who began painting in earnest at age 78? Maybe you never paint wonderful pictures that become world, world famous and valuable, but you can, in fact, find something that is yours to do and to be. And it is something that only you can do and can be. It is your dharma, it is your divine purpose. It may be the reason why you came to earth, to love, to serve, and to remember the truth of your divine heritage. You know, when my late mother, Daisy, my precious mom, uh, my father had passed and she moved in to live with me, one of her friends said to her, Daisy, my love, what are you going to do now that you have given up um, your kitchen? Because, of course, she ran her kitchen, you know, in a certain way. And she said, my new assignment is to hold the light in John's home and to keep the flame of faith and love burning. Isn't that just lovely? It just, I thought, wow, now that's an, a, 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 an assignment. That is fulfilling. To keep the flame of faith and love burning in my son's home. So, you know, if you were at that point where you have gone into another phase of your, of your cycle of your life, and you think, what do I do? You can hold the light. That is a really an amazing task to do. When I shared it with Reverend Elmo, she said, you know, dear, that is what Jesus meant when he said, let your light so shine. Um, not everybody stands up at a, at a lectern and gives a Sunday, a Sunday encouragement or is a motivational speaker, but everybody can let their light shine at, at be, to be an inspiration to the people at home, the people in the neighborhood, and beyond. Of course, Daisy did indeed take over my kitchen. Um, she, she insisted that cayenne shouldn't be beside cinnamon because cayenne is a pepper and should be beside paprika. So we used to argue about that. I said, Mommy, see cayenne, I, my, my, my spices are in alphabetical order. She said, yes, but cayenne is a pepper, so it should go with pea. Sometimes we get into arguments about non-issues, don't we? Uh, one of the things that, that I, I, I learned from having her live with me is the importance of not taking away older folks' power. That one of the things that, that is most import, important for people as they go into the, the, the golden years of their lives is to feel fruitful and that they are valid, valuable, authentic, contributing members of this society. And this is what I think we, we have really, to a great extent, missed the boat with in Western society, you know, in the, in, the, in the Eastern cultures and in Africa, the ancestors and the old are revered for their wisdom and for the, for the strength and the depth of their knowledge and their faith and their love. And so they, are, they, are, they become icons in the village or in the, in, in the community and are looked up to, not treated as if they are worthless and why you just don't stay home? and keep yourself quiet kind of thing. So it is so important that we have a mental set of what fruitful years mean to us. No matter what your age, you can step into a glorious new adventure 
living in partnership with the indwelling presence that has always walked through life with you. And which is more, you can be secure in the knowledge that the matter that you consider important, if it's important to you, it is important to the universe, it is important to God, and God never lets you down. There's a lovely story attributed to author Dan Clark, who wrote for the Chicken Soup for the Soul series of books. It is the story of someone who didn't let chronological age affect her fruitfulness. And Dan Clark tells it as though it was his own encounter. So let me just um, share it with you. The first day of school, our professor introduced himself and challenged us to get to know someone we didn't already know. I stood up to look around when a gentle hand touched my shoulder. I turned around to find a wrinkled little old lady beaming up at me with a smile that lit up her entire being. She said, hi handsome, my name is Rose, I'm 87 years old. Can I give you a hug? I laughed and enthusiastically responded on what you make. And she gave me a giant squeeze. Why are you in college, in college at such a young and tender age, age, I asked. She jokingly, she jokingly replied, I'm here to meet a rich husband, get married, have a couple of kids, and then tra retire and travel. <laughs> no, no, seriously, I asked. I was curi curious what may have motivated her to take on this challenge at her age. And she said, I always dreamed of having a college education, and now I'm getting one. After class, we walked to the student union building and shared a chocolate milkshake. We became instant friends. Every day for the next three months, we would leave class together and walk and talk nonstop. I was always mesmerized listening to this time machine as she shared her wisdom and experience with me. Over the course of the year, Rose became a campus icon and easily made friends wherever she went. She loved to dress up and she reveled in the attention on her by the other students. At the end of the semester, we invited Rose to speak at our banquet and I'll never forget what she taught us. She was introduced and as she stepped up to the podium, she began to deliver her prepared speech and she, and dropped, she dropped her three pack 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 cards on the, on the floor. Frustrated and a little, and a little embarrassed, she, she leaned into the microphone and simply said, I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm so jittery. I gave up beer for Lent and this whiskey is killing me. I'll never get my speech back in order, so let me just tell you what I know. As we laughed, she cleared her throat and she began. We do not stop playing because we are old. We grow old because we stop playing. There are only four secrets to staying young, being happy and achieving success. You have to laugh and find humor in every day. You've got to have a dream. When you lose your dreams, you die. You know, we have so many people walking around who are dead and they don't even know it. There's a huge difference, she said, between growing old and growing up. If you are 19 years old and you lie in bed for a full year and don't do any productive thing, you will turn 20 years old. And if I am 87 and lie in bed for one whole year and never do anything, I will turn 88. Anybody can grow older. That doesn't take any talent or ability. The idea is to grow up by always finding the opportunity to change. Have no regrets. 
The elderly usually don't have regrets for what, they, for what we did, but rather for the things we did not do. The only people who fear death are those with regrets. She concluded her speech by courageously singing the rose. You know that lovely song made popular by Bette Midler and Tony Henry sang it a couple of weeks ago for us so beautifully. She sang the rose and challenged each of us to study the lyrics and live them in our daily lives. At the year's end, Rose finished the college degree she had begun all those many years ago. And one week after her graduation, Rose died peacefully in her sleep. Over 2,000 college students attended her funeral in tribute to the wonderful woman who taught by example that it's never too late to be all that you can be. Now, my friends, this is not an isolated case. Thousands have proved that the fruitful years, the giving years, are not bounded by birthdays. They may begin at any time of life past infancy. You know, almost the entire life, if not the, the entire life of Jesus, the way sure, was made up of fruitful years. Because he had chosen his destination and kept his eye fixed on the goal that he had chosen for himself, the goal of revealing humanity's divinity to all who turn to the light and yearn for the truth of our being, for the reason for living and for uh, the answer to what is our relationship with the divine. So when we come to the realization of the presence of God, the presence of the divine within us, and begin tapping into that indwelling power, the fruitful years arrive, whether we be young or old, by the world's standards. The universe knows nothing of the chronology. It knows only what you intend for yourself and for your fellow human beings. It knows only what you have decided to be, who you have decided to be, and how you are going to be it on a daily basis. And I love what Rose said, you, 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 you never stop learning. And so it brings me to your assignment. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is to learn something new this week. Now, it doesn't have to be a college degree. It may be just to try a new recipe. You know, YouTube is full of, you can learn anything, how to do anything by going to YouTube. So it might be just as simple as a, a, a new cupcake re recipe. I just saw one that has only three ingredients, um, self-rising flour, overripe bananas, and spring water. And evidently, it's, it's, it makes a very fluffy, light pancake, uh, cupcake. So it may be that something as simple as that, a new recipe. Or it could be something more complicated like a craft or playing a musical instrument, but learn something new. Set yourself the target of learning something new. It does wonders for, for your neural networks and your, your sense of self and your sense of, of being fruitful and accomplished. And if you do undertake the assignment, please let us know by, by posting a, a note um, in our, on our Temple of Light Facebook page. We'd like to hear from you about what you learned. I'd like to conclude with a meditation which is found on page 520 of the Science of Mind textbook. Uh, it is titled, The Time has come, and I'd like to read it line by line and ask you to repeat it with me, after me. The time has come, the hour has struck. Together, the time has come, the hour has struck. The power from within me has come forth and is expressing through my life. The power from within has come forth and is expressing through my life. 
I do not have to wait. Today is the time. I do not have to wait. Today is the time. Today I enter into all truth. Together. Today I enter into all truth. Today I am completely healed. Today I am completely healed. Today I enter into my inheritance. Today I enter into my inheritance. Today the truth has made me free. Today the truth has made me free. And I've added the line, today my life is one of fruitful years. Today my life is full of one of fruitful years. My friends, may your every day be fruitful. May all your years be a blessing to you, to your fellow man, and a joy to God. God loves you, and so do I. Namaste.